and good morning and welcome to Locked in Stitches. As always, it is Julie Hall here. Let me just make sure that everything is looking good on my screen before I make you watch me, you know, play with my device. Nobody wants that. Okay, how's everyone going this morning? Okay, it's obviously something with how I set up the links in this. So I can see that I am online here. I can see that we've got people watching. So let me come through because I can't see it on my Facebook. Just for sport. So good morning, how are we going today? I hope you are having a great day. Excuse me while I'm just looking here at my computer screen as well, making sure that I can see you all. Good morning, Michelle Reynolds and Lisa Callum. Thank you for joining us. Um, can I just confirm that you guys can hear me? Um, I've spent way too much time gossiping on the phone this morning instead of um, actually, you know, assuming that everything was going to be fine. I've got my little um, my little microphones that, um, that I bought and that I'm loving and I did such a great job plugging them in last night. <laughs> if only the cable was also plugged into the charger. So... When I turned it on at about quarter to 11, yeah, if you could pull that the quilt down so that we're actually not just looking at my crappy background there, that would be wonderful, Louise. Um, and thank you, Louise, for, um, for joining me today. I hope you've got your coffee ready. Um, so, um, and I will, of course, talk throughout as we go along about... Um, the joy of the cruise it wasn't as bad as voyage of the damned um <coughs> it's amazing what not having the kids there does oh, however yeah. i came home for a holiday dad is a 6 a.m waker upper oh, um no. i am not a 6 a.m waker upper um so today we are going to work on block two of our quilt and to be honest i'm a little bit um, cafuddled at the moment <clears throat> so let me just bring up which one block two is uh, embroidery files found don't you hate it when the damn things um, just does the slightly wrong thing okay so this is our block two um, that we are going to work on today and what you will notice is um, it is four individual blocks that we've then joined together using quilt as you go technique now as you know I'm a huge fan of using crap up so the back of my quilt is always patchworky in style um, and I'll give Louise that one to look at because Louise and I really haven't caught up. I don't think sort of, you know, for more than Christmas. 10 or 15 minutes. Well, it's because I've always had somebody in the damned house. Um, okay. Um, oh, Lisa, I like that one not turning the PowerPoint on. That's another good trick. I'll try that one next time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to look at how to... Um, create our gorgeous um, blocks and what I love about this if any, as anybody um, stitch one of these ones out it's the texture if you run your fingers over it and I am such a tactile person for me it just really is all about the texture so let's come along and get stitching So 
we're going to start with using our um, wash away thread to baste that design in. So there are a lot of stitches in the block. If I look at this block, we have 28,600 stitches. <gasps> Times that by four blocks in the bigger block. So there's a lot of stitches there happening. Do you need not do you need a reasonable quality fabric then? Oh, fantastic question. So Louise's question, if you didn't hear it, was do you need a reasonable quality fabric? Fabric makes a hell of a difference. Mm. Okay. If, I'm looking at this. This is not a uh, $2 quality. This no. is a reasonable quality um, yeah. fabric. Okay, so... Think about your clothes as well. Mm. So you are wearing a gorgeous dress today with a fabulous print on it that is obviously made of quality fabric. Mm. I'm wearing something from, I think, Best and Less from a year ago that is, you know, it's a little bit droopy. It hasn't held up to the washing. It yeah. hasn't. It is exactly the same with our quilting. Um, the quality that you put in is the quality that you get out. Um, so I do use the best quality um, quilting fabric, quilters cotton, yeah. and the thickest that I, you know, I like to be able to run my fingers over it. Yeah, yeah, um, and not see through it. Yes, yes, not see through it, not be able to rip it, um, and different like I had a some stuff from mum's um, stash it was just such poor quality that um, I used it for uh, in the hoop and when I turned it inside out it, it ripped oh it's not worth it no no it's not S worth your time so quality in quality out um, and quite honestly if you are putting 28,000 stitches in it it's worth paying for the quality like mm. you know it's the same as when you sew you know when you're putting the effort in it's not a five dollar t-shirt that you're buying for the grandkids and mm. putting an embroidery design on it's something that you're going to wear for a number of years mm. so you can see that we're coming in and there are i think there's only about four or five main stitches in this entire project so you've got the candle wick you've got your satin you've got the um, double daisy chain and then we've got the fill so this is a double daisy chain here and again it's just it just looks like that daisy chain that we used to do so that stitch there if you see yeah yeah i was looking at that's lovely and linny dixon good morning my darling how are you going okay And now one of the things that I do like on um, doing these single blocks is that they are so perfect for people with the smaller machines. Mm. Um, you know, just doing that five inch block. So Louise, I know you've got the, um, the six needle this for you would be on your 130 by 180 hoop but is my needle is it high enough yes yes i, I don't have to change it no oh okay I no thought... i did all of the one in the background quilt like the lighter one i did it on the 10 needle oh okay so you can do this on your um i know people like the Janome 500s question me on this one as to whether they can do the um, 
the embroidery with um, because they don't have presser height options. Mm. Um, you can absolutely, and I'm going to make sure that I demo this year how you can even do things like rope bowls with the embroidery onlys, and it's just changing it to a darning foot with the spring. Oh, but one. you don't need to do that on your multi needle. Oh, okay, uh, I've got one of those on my. I've actually had one of those foot feet, but I've never used it. Good morning, Roz. How are you doing this morning? I bet it's warm up your end. It is 27 degrees here apparently at the moment. It's getting a bit warm, isn't it? Yeah, it was quite nice walking down. Always worth seeing whether things have come through or not. Um, and the way I've digitized this, and I've, I've been paying a lot of attention to the digitizing side at the moment, is just, and the reason I've been doing that is just because um, one of the things I did on the cruise was I started writing um, some classes for digitizing. Oh, okay. Um, and it's been great because I've been going through and playing um, with not only the standard software that I use, which is the same as Hatch and Benina, it's the Digitizer 5.5 from Genome. Um, but I've also then been playing with the um, Genomi Artistic Digitizer and it's been a great way of teaching myself that and finding all the tips and tricks in that. Yeah. Um, and then the lovely Michelle is looking at um, utilising the same basic concept and writing it up for the Premier Plus. Oh, okay. Um, and we did have an idea because I was really, really bored. Um, on the um, at different points on the cruise, that um, you know that there might have to be a um, a digitising retreat or something along the way. We shall have to see. Um, so therefore you teach people how to make their own designs with their own software oh okay so and and it's all the it's all the little things like even how to chop up mm. a design that you've bought and you want to do something you know different with or or anything like that mm. um, and there would be people interested in doing things like that oh look so many of us have uh, have the software and just don't know how to use it yeah um but um, now I know Michelle did a bit of a tease last week. A um, couple of things that I'm doing in the next few weeks. Keep your eye out. We are going to announce a retreat in Queensland. It will be a multidisciplinary retreat. So by that, I mean I will teach machine embroidery we're going to partner up with another couple of teachers who will teach bag making who will teach the scan and cut and who will teach regular sewing um, and we're just confirming venue details and things like that this week um, and you'll be able to then sort of Pick and choose what electives you want to take oh. for the retreat. Um, so keep your eye out. Um, it's something that um, hopefully I'll be able to tell you more about in the next two weeks. Um, just need to confirm one or two more little things. Um, now, what I'm loving here with the pink is this little cross hatch. It's 
It's lovely. It's it's not quite a cross stitch, but it just gives a beautiful fill to the element. It to does. To the block. Mm. So, cruise was lovely. Um, food was good. Oh, food, well, food was plentiful. So, things that I've learnt. Um, I thought that Carnival was the lower end of the cruising standard. Apparently, that's P it goes P and O, Carnival, Princess, and then um, I don't know Royal Caribbean and Norwegian and all of those. Um, so, live and learn. Room was fantastic. Like it had a little like, and we went bottom of the rung. Like. You know, we were in an interior room, so no light, no, and and we knew that it had going light, in. but it had no yeah, no view, no view. We knew that. Um, but you're not there to spend the time in your room, exactly. Um, so um, so yeah, that didn't bother us. Um, but it had a really nice little dressing area, so like we still had privacy from each other because you know yeah i'm traveling with my dad um so that was all fine um i think carnival where we went last year had better food options i mean there was certainly enough food that was never you know and we went there were three different restaurants there so we had different you know meal options each night plus the um the pantry or the the thing where you go and have bits of everything um but what they didn't have that they did have on the carnival one and it didn't bother me because i'm not a huge ice cream person but they had they on carnival they had like a soft serve machine mm. so you know twice a day the kids that i took in september were at the soft serve machine mm. um this one didn't have anything like that um but, you know, Dad and I went and saw a show each half, each night. Um, you know, we had dinner at five. Um, That's a bit early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my God, you know, he let me sleep in every morning. He got up at six and by 6.30 he'd left to go and, you know, read his Bible for the hour. Um, and then he'd come back at... 10 to 8 to wake me up so that we could go and have breakfast together. <laughs> and look, it was lovely spending time with him. I will never regret that. I will, you know, I'm, you know, bitching and moaning and everything, but I'm so pleased I did it and it was yeah. just lovely. But I'm pretty sure I'm his shill. Um, so he took um, two dozen Gideon Bibles, just the little ones, the ones that they like, you know, give out to nurses and things. Um, and he likes to then give them to, to staff and people that he can witness to, people who can't say no to him. Um, but he's so deaf that with mask wearing, it's very difficult to hear what the staff are saying, what the... So, yeah, fundamentally, I was Dad's shill, confirming that he wasn't going to offend anybody if he offered them a Bible and, you know... All the good stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Wellington was absolutely amazing. I would love to go back there. Um, we didn't see Christchurch. And can I tell you, we were, now Louise and I was discussing before we started class that um, the, um, the whole, well, the concept of God and believing. So, two days before we left, we were told we weren't going to Auckland and somewhere else. Um, and everybody was disappointed, blah, 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 all of that. We changed the direction that the cruise boat went in. And two days after we left, Auckland was hit with um, all of the gale force winds. Yeah. And um, and then mudslides and all this and, a, and an earthquake mm. and that would have been the days that we were there. Um, oh, Joanne Stoddard, thank you for joining us, my darling. I didn't see that. I do apologise. Um, 
Um, oh, look, we would love to have you come to the retreat, darling. And if I whisper, it might be not that far from you. Um, and we will offer payment options. We, you know, we want to make it easy for everybody. Think of me like your local drug dealer. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, cruising through the Fiordland was gorgeous. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was all good and fine. Um, I used up, um, you know, all of um, all of our cruising credit on buying a um, a coffee every day and an internet package. Um, internet packages are absolutely necessary and a total ripoff. Oh, they would be. Um, yeah, two hundred and eighty dollars, and I couldn't get a message. Um, oh no, that's ridiculous. So you know, I couldn't, I couldn't come and do little videos or things like that. Um, so did but, you get a refund? Oh heavens no! <laughs> Welcome to cruising. Um, <laughs> Um, but it was it was lovely to come home to my darlings as well. Funniest story from when I was away has to be. Um, oh, I do love it. How all the colours coming. Just the brights are really popping. It's mm. just so different and makes it just look so different. Um, so um, funniest story from while I was away. I um, was going to be gone two weeks. So I made up two menu plans and... Um, did they stick to them? Oh, well, they did, but it gets funnier. Um, and I'll show you at the, end of, at the end of this, I'll show you the video as well. I'll show you the menu plan because that in itself is hilarious. Um, so, um, so, yes, I've got my menu plan there and then I've got the shopping list below it with this is just how compulsive I am taken down to the level of um, which stores to buy what in um, and <laughs> all of that was fantastic Cameron decided that to help he was going to do the grocery shopping all right um, you know and that means well i was going to have the girls do it and cameron pick them up afterwards um cameron decided it was just easier for him to do it himself and not have to coordinate with the girls not a problem i would printed out the um the menu plan slash grocery list and placed it on the fridge cameron takes it off the fridge and takes it shopping and then throws it away so for three days while I was away, they didn't. They had all these ingredients and didn't know what meals to make with it, because I didn't see their email on. Can you resend me the grocery list, the menu plan? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they had to go, had to try and work out themselves. <laughs> um, and and the other fun one was. Um, because I caught up with everybody individually just to see how things work for them because I'm going away again. Um, and, um, you know, Cameron's complaint was Emma said she wanted, um, must, have, must have said she wanted bubble tea and Cameron said, well, put which flavour you want on the shopping list. Put what you want on the shopping list. So she wrote down nectarine. So he bought her nectarines. <laughs> Not bubble tea, nectarines. Um, well, that's <laughs> fair enough. Um, and, and then, um, then we had. Um, um, I'm amazed that they didn't have the shopping list on their phones. I know, and I think that's what I'm going to have to do. For um, for the next one, everybody's going to have to get a digital copy. Um, I thought printing it out was the smarter thing. Obviously, I was wrong. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our stitching looking pretty. Um, so. 
So, um, but that's okay. I misheard poor Em's the week before. She was asking me to buy razors. I need some razors. What I heard was I need some raisins. And so then I hand them over to her. Here are the raisins that you wanted, darling. I thought she wanted them for porridge or something. She looks at me like I'm stupid and for, you know, for a fair enough reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if it'd been on a phone, she would have been... <laughs> Yes. So, um, yeah. So no, but they all, they, they all, all survived. Managed. Yes. Um, so what did you cook with the raisins? Nothing yet, <laughs> but I did get a raisins next time. <laughs> but yeah, stupid things. You know, I put all the standards, so your milk, your butter, your, you know. Because I wasn't there having coffee, we didn't use up as much milk. Because milk was on the shopping list, he still went and bought six more litres. Um, <laughs> So things like that, we're just yeah. learning as we go. Yes. So the kids don't drink a lot of milk. Well, they're back at school now as well. So yeah. so no, not as much as we did say over Christmas when they might have been having a smoothie or a... Yeah. Yeah. And then Cameron brought home, like, I think 12 litres from work because it was they'd ordered too much or they got given too much made some cheese and then the rest of it ended up going off in our fridge mm. um yeah so where is he working he's still at coal no no he is now at um cafe in philip um which he's enjoying the work but the owners have just had a baby and he thought he was doing really well and he's been you know made it known that he wants more hours because it's you know it's casual and they've just hired a friend of theirs who's come back from doing barista in london um at a much higher rate of pay with more hours so he's feeling a little bit frustrated at the present time and you know this is the joy of mm. employment in the current market mm. Um, and there's nothing I can do about it for him. No. Um, you know, I would like to be that, you know, that safe place to, to fall that. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, all the stuff he's got to, you know, come to work out sort of thing on his own. So what's everybody else been up to the last two weeks? You've heard my stories now. Louise, have you been doing any stitching? Oh, just days for girls. Stitching. Oh, lovely. Mm. Yeah. So, candle wicking does take more time to stitch because every single one of those candle wicks, I think, has. I think it has 32 odd stitches in it. Oh, wow. Um. And obviously it takes more thread. Yes. Um, so are you using up your old thread for it? Or? No, no, I'm using some of the Wonderfill. Oh, okay. Uh, so how big a quilt are you actually making? Mine will be, I'm just looking to see exactly how many stitches each of these little candle wicks has. Okay, so each of those stitches, each of those little candle wicks has 45 stitches in it. Wow. Just in case you need to, you know, no useless facts or anything. Um, Cause yeah, I really wanted those fluoro sort of colors to be, to be mm. shining through. And show that Candlewick doesn't have to be, it has, Candlewick gets a bad rap 
for being um, boring and old. So you don't have to do. You don't have to do it this way. No. Okay, now this is the part that I'm excited about showing you. I am using my ASR foot. And the ASR is the automatic stitch regulator. And I've got my block and I've trimmed it up just a, just a little bit. It's still, still a little bit larger than we need. And I've got my backing fabric and I've got a piece of wadding. So this is a new foot with a new machine. This is a new foot with a new machine. And what it does, it's the, um, so I'm going to do free motion um, because there's only a little bit of quilting in this. The blocks themselves are quite large. But what I'm loving about this foot um, is all of the stitches. And if you look carefully in the stitches, you know how sometimes when you do free motion, you get big stitches and little stitches. Mm. With this, they are all the same length because of the stitch regulator. Now, it is hard to get used to because depending on how quickly you move your fabric depends on how quickly the machine stitches. Mm. But the stitching on it's gorgeous. And now I'm, I'm using black thread. You can use, um, cause I just want this to basically hold the blocks together, not to, um, Keep them apart, I guess. And we come through and we're almost finished that one. So in other words, you don't have to um, use your embroidery machine to finish the block. No, the quilt. So the quilting is done through free motion. Mm. Now let's put it all together. Okay, so now we are going to put our quilt blocks together using the quilt as you go method. And this is the way that I was taught to do it by my um, by my mother. So what I've got here is I've got two sides that have a half inch um, seam on them from where the stitching ends. The other two sides have a one inch seam on them and you can see everything is um, quilted together and all I'm going to do is come through I've cut a one inch piece of my um, binding and sashing fabric and then for the back I've got a one and three quarter inch piece that has been folded in half and pressed. And all I'm going to do is place those together along that seam line and stitch. And then I'm going to come through and press this seam open. Now, taking my second block and making sure that I've got the half inch sides facing each other, I'm going to come through, line up the elements of that block 
and come through and stitch that second side down. So now what you've got is a beautifully finished seam here and now what we're going to do is come through and press this fabric over before we top stitch. Now you can hand stitch this if you wish but to be perfectly honest so long as you stitch in the ditch you'll be fine and I'm just going to come on down So that's firmly held down, one side done. Now we are going to repeat the process with the second side. And it's really about keeping all of those layers together. and even. And then what we're going to do is repeat the exact same process again to join these two parts together. So you're going to take a one inch strip
Now, what we now need to make sure is that as we come through this part, we are matching up that cross section beautifully. So I generally go a clip on that side and then just one on either end just matching up those start points. And I'm just pulling as I go to make sure that that stitching is going to stay as flat as I can possibly make it. What we are left with is our finished lock and I'm loving how the colors are coming through um, so I was just saying to Louise I this is a cap facet fabric that I've purchased for my um, for my sashing and I bought it off the internet and I really wasn't I, I really fell in love with the fabric on the internet because it looked so bright and it had the pink in it and it had the green and the orange and it's much duller fabric than I thought but because I'm only using that small amount of it mm. I think it does blend well and it's allowing the designs to be the hero um, okay now I see I did have some some comments there Michelle Reynolds worked out that I'm live on Julie Hall Designs and not um, not locked in stitches so sorry if I've stuffed you guys around on that one I found the same thing um, Rosalind Preston you're doing your lunar quilt blocks Rosalind I understand I have stuffed you up as well and I apologize um, the um, read me on the lunar blocks um, was one that I've actually used it looks like from a free motion um, lace file um, and yeah absolutely tear away is enough um, I instead it had there that I'd use two layers of wash away um, no tear away is enough um, and oh my god you're busy doing dresses for the girls and everything as well my heavens um 
Okay, that is more than I do. Um, Michelle Reynolds, you're talking about free motion quilting. For me, free motion is all about the act of having a bit of a drink and getting your smooth on. And once I got into the habit with the ASR foot, it was a hell of a lot easier. It's it's just working that smooth thing out and yeah a glass of red absolutely helps on that um so this is all i'm just making sure there's no other questions or anything there um so on Thursday night, we're going to do the next in the Deco Divas, um, which I'm looking forward to showing you. And it is, let me find who is month two. Videos. Month two is Lola, and let me see if I can find a picture of love, the lovely Lola here. Okay. Because so, uh, I changed all of that. So this is Lola. Um, loving the little golden elements that we have here and I think I've done her as a not a total redhead but a really soft brown hair and I'm having fun playing with the colors um, for each of these and making them different as well so that is going to be our Thursday evening um, Oh, that was what I wanted to show you, and I haven't showed Louise this one yet either. Um, isn't that just pretty? Yes. Working yeah. on a um, just a little clutch sort of evening baggy sort of a thing. Um, so this was my first test stitch. Needs a little bit of work, but I'm getting there. Um, but loving the design. Um, so I'm looking forward to bringing that one to you. Um, and other than that, that is it, my darlings. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them. Otherwise, until next time, have a stitching day, guys, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.